Okay, so hi, we're doing a voiceover intro for this video because if you haven't watched the last video, this was actually all filmed in one sitting, but then the video ended up being again like an hour long and I wanted to separate these two because one half was an update on the death middle situation since I put out my long form video about the Twitter space and everything about a week ago. And this is the other half regarding specifically Keemstar's motion to dismiss, but also a little bit about the climate of YouTuber lawsuits. So I felt that it was kind of a good place to be able to separate the videos into two pieces because that way there are two different topics and then it's a little bit more digestible. And if you wanted the hour long video, you can just watch them back to back. I want to take this time too to thank my patrons, which I'll put it on the screen over this little picture of Squish Gang that looks a little bit disheveled and links to social media sources all that kind of stuff down below as well as the patreon and amazon wishlist to support the channel feel free as well to suggest any content you'd like to see with the email that is also listed in the description there will be timestamps for the video as well so we're going to begin with going through the lawsuit paperwork and i talk about a bit about the writing i want to preface here right now i do not go to law school i have never gone to law school i am not a lawyer however I do have a degree in rhetoric, which is a form of argumentation and structural writing. And there's a lot of overlap in the content that you learn. And the university I went to for my undergraduate, if you were doing pre-law, you actually had to take rhetoric courses. So I'm talking more so about the points being made and the argumentation in the lawsuit rather than the actual function of the laws. And then we'll talk a little bit about the YouTuber climate and I'll close out the video with a conclusion that I actually filmed. So I have to re-record this because I tried to do it in OBS Labs and it went very poorly and was horribly out of sync. And there was a weird high frequency squealing noise coming from my microphone. So as a result, we are going to do it again and I'm gonna overlay it. So hopefully the sync is okay. But right away, I wanna get into the statement. So we're gonna start with what's called the declaration um, of the support of defendants dis motion to dismiss. This just means like the proof. So this is, if you can see, all of these links are, are uh, just a bunch of different tweets and photos and stuff and evidence that they're holding. We actually don't really need this necessarily because I think there's enough in just these two pieces that I've highlighted up here. So if we begin, this is a video excerpt, right? Like you tell by the timestamps. So it says the whole cat like person, I mean, like I said, it was an accident, but people started saying like, because of the sarcasm that I was sounding like a cat, like a moody cat, you know, I started going into that more and more. Uh, and that's, uh, that's how you like the whole like cat boy, cat guy, whatever persona came from. I am reading this verbatim as you can see. So that is why there are so many stutters. So that's just kind of how it works. There's another excerpt here. This is regarding when he made he tweeted out a fake story regarding charlie d'amelio and it's interesting because this says the following it says regarding the incident where he falsely claimed to have reached out to charlie d'amelio for comment on a baby story it was a joke it was so funny because like i said context is lost right i've written i had it on the header of my account that it's satirical the whole joke is that i'm not a journalist i'm presenting all these stories as though i'm a journalist I'm not like the whole thing that like Charlie D'Amelio is like vaping uh, pretty insane because I mean, those DMs, they're not real, you know, like I've made so many other DMs that weren't real. So I want to show something here. So if we go to Twitter, right, I can look up Deaf Noodles and you can see that if we go to Deaf Noodles, who is now being cringe and going by Zaddy Noodles because he's old. But he is tweeting out stuff that's real and that happened. So you need to figure out how you're supposed to be marketing yourself here because you can't have it be real and fake at the same time, right? Because you can see that there, he sources stuff sometimes, if I can find anything. Uh, but yeah, who could have seen this coming? Austin McBroom exposed for using his niece for content his by his brother's baby mom, Shiloh Walker. So here's like screenshots of DMs. So are you fabricating this Instagram story and these DMs? Here's he's ranting about something. I don't feel like looking at it. But there are times where he's tweeting like TMZ stuff, right? And he's citing it. So that's why it's so weird to me because it's like, 
you can't have it both ways. You need to be like a fake news st- source or a real news source. Because like this is TMZ and he has just screenshots of the articles, which is weird because why would you put the text and then restate the text? But that's besides the point. So when is it fake? Like find me fake tweets. Are these real? I remember seeing this as this on CNN. Like, where's the satire? But I thought everything you said was fake and was a joke. So does that mean these videos when you're talking about your, let's say this here. There is, con- there is concerted effort from numerous creators to deplatform me, which I actually don't think that's true. If you enjoy the content, make sure to sign for my Patreon. We're not going anywhere. Is that troll? Is that fake? Your Patreon not exist? Also, I apologize for the reflection in my glasses. I just can't see today. Um, and I'm doing this, refilming this, so I don't have any makeup on or anything. But yeah, so that's another part that I think is very bizarre. So then we go into the actual statement. This is the Moran- Memorandum of Law. No, Memorandum of Law, Support of Defendant's Motion to Dismiss the Complaint. Okay, so this is the Motion to Dismiss from Keemstar's lawyer. And we're going to talk about the process of the rhetoric of this whole thing. Because that's kind of the biggest part of it. So let's start with the preliminary statement. Because this is kind of the most important part. On May 19th, 2022, plaintiff Dennis Vitoza filed a complaint against uh, defendant Daniel M. Keem. Claiming that Keem defamed him in a Twitter post a year earlier, dated May 21st, 2021. The subject tweet was of and concerning a fictional comedic character named Deaf Noodles that Fitosa has created solely for entertainment and jokey purposes as a YouTube broadcaster and social media personality. The Deaf Noodles character is known for its repeated disclaimers that everything about it is meant to be a joke and for posing satirical commentary about other social media personalities. The character is a frequent critic of Keem and others. Pursuant to Rules 12, uh, 12B Subsection 6 and 12B Subsection 1 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, he moves to dismiss the complaint for failure to state a claim for the lack of subject matter jurisdiction. So this means that he's essentially not saying the right things about defamation. The complaint should be dismissed because one, the comment about Def Neal's character does not defame Feitoza as a matter of law. Two, in context, the subject tweet was obviously made in response to a war of words, mocking and offensive tweets that Def Noodles, the character, repeatedly hurled toward Keem. And three, Feitoza pleads no actual damages reputationally or otherwise does not meet the amount in controversy required for court to entertain the lawsuit. Um, I will say, I'm not going to comment on like the financials because the whole section about the 75,000, I'm not going to... I have nothing to say about that. I don't really know... I obviously don't have my hand in Dennis's pocket, you know, despite the fact that, um, you know, a couple of the stands are in my comments saying that this is just for me to make money, which is. So I just want to read how he describes the character. He says it's a mix between the soup and the Colbert report, a satirical take on Internet news commentary hosted by Kat in a Minecraft house. I don't know if there's like a curse with trying to take late night television to YouTube and it's just like not working. But I have yet to see this be actually successful in any way. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to point that out. But this is essentially the parameters. This is essentially the parameters that the character is set out for. So this is kind of what he's basing the reality off of here. Then says the following. Feitoza joked about the Deaf Noodles character being mocked by competitors and others, saying they're attacking this character who is a fictional craft uh, cat in a Minecraft house who just does not exist. So I'm wondering if a part of this is talking about the character and the person he's created. I just wonder if he actually had claimed defamation under like an LLC or something. Can you even do that? Or some sort of like attack on an LLC that then it might be a bit of a different story. I just think it's interesting because it's a lot of cognitive dissonance for... Um, Dennis to insist on this character being separate from him, but then claim defamation to his actual person while Keemstar is literally tweeting at the fake account, allegedly, like the character account. When confronted during the podcast interview about a Def Noodles post saying that Def Noodles had reached out for comment to social media personality concerning a story, Feitoza admitted that the post was fake because the cat character is fake and that the comment was never sought from from the person from the personality. Feitosa also admitted during a podcast that Def Noodles has made other posts that are not real. As I said, it's also so incredibly unclear when it's real and when it's not. I just pulled up some tweets that were real. 
you can't try to market yourself off of being the first to drop a story. The stories, and then if they're if you're first off the presses, then the presses it needs to be true so other people can use it. That's like your whole purpose. But then you are everything's fake. Like I remember last year when he was like blowing up a lot. His whole thing was if you want to hear something first, you hear it from the Deaf Mills Twitter account. Like that's what he was known for. He wasn't like I didn't even know it was satire until like a couple weeks ago. And I mentioned in the video that I could I used to not watch it because I found the character was annoying. But you can have like a charactery type, like a portrayal of your of the way you deliver your videos, but it still means is representative of yourself to some extent. But this line was really important. So he repeatedly admitted that everything the Deaf Noodles character did and said was meant to be a joke and was always satirical. Again, and then there's a huge, huge stark contrary. And I wonder how Deaf would be able to defend this because either he has to admit that there is truth to the Deaf Noodles account, which then means in tweets where he's, which they bring up that are borderline to fame and Keemstar, those would be thought to be real. Or he has to admit that everything's fake. So then this whole persona off of being the fresh off the presses guy is false. And all he does is spread misinformation while marketing it poorly. So that's some food for thought on that regard. Defendant Daniel Keem is another so-called YouTuber broadcasting under the name Keemstar. Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. I have to do it. <laughs> I have to do it. Every time I cannot do it. Keem was an early entrant in the emerging YouTube forum and provides commentary on other YouTubers and social media influencers. Within this relatively small insular universe, comedians, entertainers, gamers, gamers, and influencers post salacious and often controversial content about each other in the hope of generating reactions among those who follow them by getting more clicks, subscribers, and or followers. That's the nature of the platform. Would I necessarily agree with the approach of that everything is done for reaction? Not necessarily, but that's neither here nor there. So here comes the tweet in question. In this case, Fetosa alleges that Keem defamed him based on this exact on this tweet. Okay. Deaf Noodles has allegedly groomed girls ages 12 to 15. Big YouTuber source. Victims are scared of him and wish to stay anonymous, but may come forward soon. Deaf Noodles has declined to give us comment on these allegations made against him. So they're essentially trying to spin this as it was kind of a spoof off of Deaf Noodles' tweets. But it's interesting because the format of this is very similar to the infamous Charlie D'Amelio vaping tweet that he claimed to get comment on and then went, you know, no, that's actually not happening. Like, I'm a fake channel or whatever. So then they say the subject tweet does not reference Fetosa. It is aimed at the... De if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, I'm so sorry. I forgot. To I was supposed to check this morning and then I forgot again mispronounce the fake name you have for me in your brain i can't pronounce fetosa i don't know how to say it i don't know where it comes from let me live anyways yeah call me micah if you if i if you're mad that i said fetosa wrong it is aimed at the deaf Noodles character that routinely mocks and attacks youtubers under the word allegedly caveats and phrasing and fake sources and importantly it follows as a part of the of the long-running volley of insults claimed as a tear go rant specifically posted by the deaf Noodles character towards keem this is something that's like so important too, because if Deaf Noodles wants to claim that it doesn't matter if the word allegedly is used, he is getting rid of his own caveat and his own crutch for a lot of the claims that he makes and other people as well, because it's like allegedly is a big word for commentary YouTubers and is known in the commentary YouTuber sphere, uh, sphere as a way to avoid getting sued when you want to claim something because you're saying allegedly for the sake of I'm not confirming or denying, right? Because you want to be able to talk about the things that you're hearing, but you don't want to have full certainty in case something comes out. This also became a little bit more prevalent when post by sister era James Charles too, where a lot of people didn't want to claim things as fact because the internet really has an ability to fool people into a different reality than the one that exists. Then they have two tweets where if you argue that the word allegedly is irrelevant, then I would would border be defaming Keemstar allegedly, except for the fact that Deaf Noodles' cat character is fake and satirical, but then that's not an actual person to defame, right? So the lawyer set up a really good argument here rhetorically, right? Where it's like you can't just the point that I made in the last video too, right? Where you can't have your cake and eat it too. So it says the following. These Skype messages show two people discussing Keemstar allegedly having a 15-year-old girl get naked on stream, as well as the streamer Cupcake. 
May 19, 2021 tweet, he said, Keemstar allegedly abusing his girlfriend in resurfaced video. Keemstar allegedly yells at his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We hear screams and shouts. The mic cuts out at one point. She pleads with Keemstar. Stop it, you psycho. Emphasis added, of course, there's highlights and stuff like that or underlines. That's um, just kind of the thing they do in uh, legal documents and stuff. So if we get to the oh, standard of review section, I just have this part highlighted. Well, this is just shaping the idea of like what law and what process is going on here without this is like the least heavy and legal referencing section that I could like really find when I was going through this. Okay. So it says the following to survive a motion to dismiss the plaintiff's complaint must contain sufficient factual matter. Accept it as true to state a claim to relief that is plausible on his face. A claim is plausible on its face when the pleaded factual allegations allow the court to draw a reasonable inference that the defendant is liable for the misconduct alleged. This is just see Astroff and Iqbal. I would assume that's a Supreme Court case. This is just giving you the quotation. Plausible, of course, means something more than merely possible. And gouging a pleaded situation's plausibility is a context-specific job that compels us to draw on judicial experience and common sense. This is another thing when we're talking about the climate of Twitter and Twitter being as messy as Twitter is, does really help with the aspect of proving that Keemstar is not somebody to be taken seriously, at least on his interactions on the Twitter platform. So if we go down a little bit further, we're talking about how specifically the defamation is shaped in this and how this is like the nail in the coffin of def of in like definitely outlining the shape of that you can't defame a fake character it's almost like if you were trying to like defame leonardo dicaprio and you said like you start talking about jack from the titanic it's like that's a representation that leonardo dicaprio has presented not the actual person right so if you read this here it says to consider whether an alleged def defamatory statement is of and concerning a plaintiff the california courts consider the totality of the circumstances see dickinson and crosby blah blah, blah. this requires examination of the nature and full content of communication and the knowledge and understanding of the audience to whom the publication is directed. So if we're talking about who it's directed to, we're directed towards fake Catman, or is it towards Dennis? Because then if Dennis is real and the Catman is just a representation, but then there are people behind it, then that means the things that he's saying towards Keemstar are coming from one real person to another real person. Where the First Amendment comes in, I'm not too sure. Because I also am from Canada. So there's no like First Amendment here. That's not really how that works. So Americans could feel free to comment in the uh, comment section and see how they feel about how the First Amendment comes into this. But here, the alleged defamatory statement on its face and its pleading the complaint is not often concerning plaintiff Dennis Feitoza as a matter of fact or law. Indeed, the subject tweet does not mention him at all. Rather, the subject tweet is often concerning a fictitious internet cat character deaf noodles which exists solely as a comedic instrument for generating jokes and satirical commentary deaf noodles is not synonymous with fetosa this is like the big like if i would highlight this again in like you know another color like i'd be like this this deaf noodles is not synonymous with fetosa this is the biggest section of the argument as Feitosa has repeatedly admitted, disclaimed, and emphasized, Def Noodles is not separate, outlandish, comedic character developed to satirically criticize, mock, and otherwise attack other social media personalities. And to be mocked and attacked in response. Because if you're a troll and he's trolling the trolls, that's kind of the environment that you're designing. In his own description of his creative character, Plaintiff has written that Def Noodles is a satirical take in internet news commentary hosted by a cat in the Minecraft house. In discussing the Def Noodles character and the cat satirical commentary during March 4, 2021 podcast, Plaintiff justified posting jokes and fake information because at the end of the day it entertains and that's what really counts i think i actually really like this statement i think it's really easily written it's quite clear and it's just interesting because i don't understand what dev noodles thinks he can go off of if he flip-flops because the difference between let's say somebody like if ethan klein was trying to sue him ethan klein or h3h3 productions doesn't claim to purposefully spread fake things that's like, and then Dennis, like the thing is too, you could argue that, or he could have probably argued that maybe he had a change of heart or there's, there's a change in the brand because he doesn't wear the cat headphones anymore and blah, 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 blah. But in the Twitter space, just like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever, he doubled down on it being fake. So he, in his current state, he is saying that that is how it is. If you look at my hour long Deaf Noodles video, I talk about the difference in the aesthetics and how it's arguable if he's even portraying the character anymore because it's quite unclear. 
But then he doubled down on it in the Twitter space. So it's undeniable. It literally came out. Literally. It literally came out of his mouth. So not only does the subject tweet not name or reference Dennis Feitosa, there are no plausible allegations in the complaint uh, that the subject tweet refers to Feitosa by implication. As such, the subject tweet did not say anything negative or factual about plaintiff Dennis Feitosa and was not of and concerning him. Dismissal is warranted because Feitosa was not defamed as a matter of law. So then we go into the dismissed under totality of circumstances. This is just talking about how everything coming together in the environment on the internet is actually going to be the biggest, play the biggest player here. So if you look at the following, it says, First courts look at the statement in its broad context, which includes the general tenor of the en entire work, the subject of the statements, the setting, and the format of the work. Next courts turn to the specific context and content of statements, analyzing extent of figurative or hyperbolic language. Hyperbole, for those of you who don't know, is actually considered a literary or rhetorical device. It just kind of means a form of over-exaggeration and typically falseness in that over-exaggeration. Uh, and the reasonable expectation of the audience in the particular situation. Finally, courts inquire whether the statement itself is sufficiently factual, uh, factual to be susceptible of being proven true or false. That's the other thing, right? For something to be defamatory, it has to be able to be proven in, in one way or the other entirely. But when it's a character that the person who is portraying the character can't even consistently portray, then who are you actually going against, right? Here, even after putting aside the fact that a response to and toward a fictional always a joke cat character, the context of the subject tweet demonstrates that it's not possible under the three part test. And what's funny is three parts are the three parts at the beginning with the eyes and stuff. It's just funny because I I know that the lawyer was having a heyday writing this, you know, the towards a fictional always a joke cat character. Like, I feel like he quakes. That's quite funny, right? I just like reading these sometimes because they get a little bit feisty in the replies, you know? So it says, the setting format is Twitter, a platform replete with opinions, light, light on facts, and lacking in tone and clarity of statement. A reader should be predisposed to view statements made on unmoderated internet forum with a certain amount of skepticism, and with an understanding that they will likely be present one-sided viewpoints rather than assertions of provable fact. The broad context of the subject tweet involves a consideration of the industry in which the parties work, and allegedly complaint the parties were YouTube personalities in the social media influencer industry. It's another thing, too, that you're going to get with these new lawsuits that will be coming out of the YouTube platform and Twitter and stuff like that, is the companies themselves even step back from and there's a lot of these lawsuits with facebook and political parties and stuff like that that they step back from being responsible for the information so then if you have this open area where you could just run around it's going to be very different than a classical like hollywood lawsuit you know and it's really eye-opening to see in this new environment and that's also why i wanted to read this and talk about the climate of youtuber lawsuits in general but this is like the most clear one that I could kind of find because the Ethan Klein and Ela Klein lawsuit was also under different circumstances. It was like specific to copyright. It purports to be a report on an allegation made by a big YouTuber source mocking deaf noodles for previously admitting to fake sources. So here they're over, they're lining up the style of Keemstar's tweet and the style of deaf noodles' tweets, which I didn't think of at the time, but now looking at them, there is a strong similarity between the two which is a no signature disclaimer of Deaf Noodles and how the Deaf Noodles character couched each of its demeaning tweets about Keem in three consecutive days. They brought these tweets. We were looking at them earlier. Immediately preceding May 21st response of subject tweet. The subject tweet also mimics the reached out for comment lines the Deaf Noodles character has admitted to using falsely in the past. The reference to big YouTuber source further highlights that Keem is poking fun in kind and the Deaf Noodles character and consistent with the joking, mocking environment of operating not serious facts. I would I would say too, big YouTuber source is kind of a goofy way of saying it. Uh, Keem, I think it was a mix, if I'm going to throw in my alleged honest opinion, is like, I think Keem wanted to fuck with him pretty substantially, but also wanted to try to do it in a way that like could not be super legally binding and then he tried to sue it further the comments referenced in paragraph 13 of the complaint do not establish the reader did not get the joke particularly the audience with familiar and content familiarity and context the subject tweet was obviously one of the back and forth exchanges between keem and deaf noodles in the attention-seeking satirical environment of social media news and comedy and then we have the final part that i'm reading which is just the dismissal claim this is where they're going to try to set up their argument and why it doesn't really matter. 
And then they end with the money part, but again, I'm not going to get into that. It says the following. Here, dismissal is warranted for the same reasons. Furthermore, the statement itself is not sufficiently factual to be susceptible of being proved true or false. Allegedly groomed lacks detailed facts. The word groomed itself is imprecise and has different meanings. You've seen this online with different situations too, right? Where people are kind of like off the wrong like implication. People don't really know how to define it. With the pyrocynical situation, for example, I am not claiming or denying if any of that was true or not, but the kid who mentioned it misused the term groom but then corrected themselves later but i'm just saying so there have been like big youtuber events that the word has been misused so to claim that it is defined inconsistently on the internet platform i would argue is factual uh words have been characterized as imprecise when they mean different things to different people it cannot be proven true or false because of subjective relative meaning uh, the reasonable expectation of the audience in context regarding this medium, the influencer industry where literally everything is a joke with the always satirical admissions and disclaimers and the war of words going on, uh, going on at that specific time involving a satirical feline character set in a cartoon Minecraft house precludes a reasonable person from seeing the subject tweet as a statement of fact about Fetosa. In commenting on this action, the plaintiff is playing hypocritical petty clickbait games here which should not be counter uh countenanced by this court i don't know that word i don't understand what that word is I, that's like the one word in the whole thing i'm like what does that mean but yeah so they're just saying i like i like legal documents sometimes because they can be kind of petty in them a lot more than something like a literary essay for example but yeah to say to, to end off with that it's hypocrisy i would agree and i've talked about that in length in this We'll get to the other part where we talk about YouTube lawsuits and stuff like that. And I'll be back in the alpha from before. There's a lot going on with uh, with these two videos. So, bye. So now we just get to the climate of the YouTuber lawsuit. H3HC Productions did set a precedent for the ability to win a lawsuit in this type of circumstance. However, this doesn't mean that just because there is a precedent that does exist that, that it will happen. Like there's lots of other YouTubers that have used the copyright system to scare people, uh, striking channels, doing all that kind of stuff. James Charles threatened legal action, especially with, uh, in, again, with the allegations being put out by Dennis. Their foodie beauty, to dip my toe really quickly for the for the girls, uh, the foodie beauty universe. I know that there's like a lot, like Chantel put charges against Natter. But then Natter and Didi are trying to gather stuff on Chantel, kind of like a defamation style lawsuit. So now there's all of this like legal action going on. And it's just kind of making a mockery of the platform and the people that work on the platform because you're taking these social media fights and you're trying to put them onto this grand scale. And while I think Keemstar is a monster and Keemstar is absolutely egregious and does horrible things, the way that Dennis has set this up is very poor. And I feel it just kind of makes a joke out of like the actual claims that Keemstar has made against other people. And I think it's a matter of now if Keem wins something like this, that it kind of makes him unstoppable. And I think that that's something that wasn't really considered at the time of setting up this lawsuit. And I'm not saying that Def Noodles is like an idiot for trying to sue Keemstar, but the process that which he took and the inconsistencies and lack of mental clarity and and the clarity of the case was really, I feel like, irresponsible to do, especially with someone as contentious as Daniel Keem. And I just feel like this could further muddy the waters on approaching things like online defamation. But to conclude, this would be, this is hopefully going to be the last video I want to make on this. I'm not a drama channel, like, or at least I don't want to be. Not because I don't think drama channels are good, okay, because that's another argument that people make. I just don't like to, like, keep reporting on the same things. I like to make a lot of different types of videos, talk about different types of people, because I like to see how each individual approaches arguments, not as much like what's always in the internet news right now, if that makes sense. I have a couple weeks off before my classes start again, so suggest anything down below. I might do a live on Friday, let me know. Uh, I don't know, put a cowboy hat emoji if you want me to do a live on Friday. Links down below, sources like the book I was reading, stuff like that, Patreon, Amazon wishlist, all my social medias. Um, who made the Squishmallow cross stitches over there and my art on my channel. That's also going to be linked down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Bye. Somebody's awfully quiet back there.
I'm not going to call him dad. 